Training Center, training for reigning, teaching the believer how to reign in life. We would like to welcome all of our first-time live streamers, our regular live streamers, our visitors, and those who are here to our Sunday's service. We invite you to attend services throughout the week. 
please visit our website at www.riltc.net and the Reigning in Life Training Center Facebook page, where you will learn about our mission, find information on all our weekly services, conference calls, and social media, as well as how you can download all the messages free of charge. This information will also be available in the comments section after service today. For those of you who are here, please remember to put your devices on vibrate or silent. Hallelujah. Well, come on, say who the Son is set free is free indeed. Amen. That's, that's a wonderful thing. Father, we just thank you. Amen. Enjoy the praise and worship. Now, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to have, um, we've been talking about the true purpose of the church and what Jesus said about the church. And I think uh, and we want to look at that. But we're going to, one of the purposes for the church is to pray. And I think when we learn, I've learned how to pray based on what the scripture says and um, taking our kingdom responsibility. It's the church kingdom responsibility to pray. So I, thought, I felt led to just say, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to talk about, as we talk about, we went through quite a few things about what the church is, what Jesus said, the authority that the church has, what the word church means, you know, um, and then I'll, and we're going to sort of move toward the responsibility of the church. And um, so we're going to go to the book of, um, well, let me pray first, and then I can really sort of see where I would like to start. Now, also, don't forget, we've given out some um, prayers. We want to pray for our youth that's going back to school. Tuesday, say, yay. yay. Well, I ain't hearing nothing from them young people. Uh, uh, he back there saying, yeah, because he. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we, we want to, and you know, the reason why it's important for us to understand what the church responsibility is in the earth, we're the most important entity that, that's in this earth. You know, the church is very, very important in carrying out the will of God in the earth. You know, and, and God wants to, his kingdom come. Remember the prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, what? As it is in heaven. So we see where God wants to make uh, heaven, um, the earth relevant to his will in heaven. Because notice his will going to be done in earth as it already is is in Matthew 10 in heaven so we can release the will of God the kingdom of God well where's the kingdom of God for the believer and we'll be getting into that down the line is in the believer and it's just simply God's government God's power God's order so we also um, <clears throat> uh, want to so we've given out prayer for the children and confessions over the children also, you know, and, and this because we was like, well, you know, they took prayer out of school. Well, that don't mean they should have left home. That's no reason. Okay, you took it out of the school, so what, do we take it out of the house? No. And hey, listen, we should be able to pray, pray anywhere we go, right? The Bible says we can, I would that men pray everywhere. So we should be able to pray on our jobs, you know, pray um, in our family. We should have God in our families, our, our uh, government, our, um, uh, what else, our education, um, our media, arts, entertainment, and in our um, businesses. So God, the Bible says his kingdom is supposed to what? Rule over all. How is he going to rule? Say through you. But if you have no understanding, you think you're just a pauper, I'm just saved just to get to heaven, then you're not going to be very good here on the earth. Because the earth is where we are supposed to rule. And we'll look at those things where he says, and they shall reign, in uh, Revelations 5, 9, that they shall reign here on the earth. 
they shall reign here on the earth. God wants you to exercise first government over yourself and be able to be a system change agent. Especially for our children where I look at them and I'm constantly praying over the youth in our children because the Bible said out of the mouth of babes. Let me get into this. I'm already done snuck in, right? But Father, we thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus for this session today. And we thank you for all that Jesus is. Jesus, as we sort of dedicate this service or this aspect of the service, uh, just praying for our youth that's starting school this year, praying for their teachers, praying for the educational board, the superintendents, the, and all of his staff. And as we pray for all the people, all the way down to our families, teachers, children, and so forth. So we thank you that Jesus is Lord. Say, Jesus is Lord. He is Lord over this earth. He's Lord over uh, the church. And he is Lord of our personal lives. And we also declare his kingship over this earth. He is king over the earth in the kingdom. And he is king over our lives who have received him. So today, open up all of our eyes to see our responsibility to pray, to pray for one another, pray for the families, pray for the children, pray for everything on this earth, and allow your will to be done in earth here as it is in heaven. And Jesus, you said that when we teach the word, you yourself will work with us and confirm your word with signs following. I expect to see supernatural signs being released in this earth as we're sharing the word in the lives of the hearers. And this will be a great, great, successful school year. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Now, we, I don't want to, you know, I like repeating, so I go back, but I'm going to try not to go back too far. We were just saying that the church, Jesus said in Matthew 16, that the church, that upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not pre prevail. So notice he says the gates of hell, the church is the only institution that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. But then we, has to, we have to learn how to work with them and cooperate. We first need to know who we are. What makes us the church? Well, we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and believe that God raised him from the dead after hearing the gospel. And then the Bible says from that moment we're saved. Romans 10, 9. We're born and saved is to be healed, delivered, and prosperous. So this is so important for the church to understand that we're carrying everything we need to succeed. Amen. But what are we doing? We're getting our minds renewed. We're spiritually alive to God the moment we accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And then we get our minds renewed. You're a lot smarter than you think. You see, we've been running off of human intelligence. Now we're, now we're operating off the wisdom of God. Because Jesus, in the book of, and you have to start, and we're going to talk about why you have to give voice to these things. A lot of people keep saying, I can't think. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, it's too rough. They'll never change. You are, that is not the language of a system change agent. Right. Hallelujah. You have to, you know, you have to sing and talk and speak freedom into the atmosphere. Yeah. Come on, say, I'm free in Jesus' name. Free in Jesus. He is God. God never regretted saving us. Right. He thought we were worth saving. Right. And, he, and he hadn't changed his mind about it. Hallelujah. So, so it's important that, that Jesus said the gates of hell should not prevail, cannot pursue it, and subdue the church. Now, it's doing a lot of other things, but, but God meant for the church to be engaged in these spheres of influence, which I'll be getting into probably starting next week, and I'm going to show you how to navigate 
how to, how to operate, release the kingdom of God in your household. You can release the kingdom of God over your, your siblings, over your parents, over your grandparents. See, we haven't been, we haven't taught. Remember when Jesus, um, when they came, when they brought the children to Jesus and the, and the disciples like, no, 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 don't bother him, man. He busy. Jesus said, hey, 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 cut it out. Suffer, allow the children to come unto me, for theirs is what? The kingdom of God. So God, it says, out of the, even the mouth of babes. And, um, and, um, and uh, um, Psalms 2, Psalms 8, 2, out of the mouth of babes thou have uh, ordained strength. We can teach people how to speak words, how to believe God. Let me tell you, children are so more spiritual in the sense of that they don't have their minds bombarded with a whole lot of other things yet, a lot of concepts and things like that. So, so I'm, I'm very sensitive to, uh, you know, just, just teaching the youth and seeing them grow and, and knowing that they can pray. They have authority. Just to, See, faith will work for a six-year-old, a five-year-old, just as much as it will work for a 60-year-old, a 70-year-old. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes, thou have ordained strength. So the church is the called out ones. You have to go back and listen to um, these sessions, these last what, four sessions. They've been really good. So the, the word iglesia, it means called out. So I know we think church is just clappy hands and singing and all of that. And we'll find out that the church is where you learn how to praise God. The church is really about, um, um, it's a sphere of influence that where we either learn how to worship God, know him as Father, by receiving the Lordship of Jesus, allowing the Holy Spirit to inhabit us through born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit. So, that we can worship God in spirit and in what? He said the Father seeks us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Or if we don't do that, then we're going to settle for, for what? We're going to settle for, for religion or some kind of works trying to get God's attention, trying to be accepted. God already accepted you in Christ Jesus trying to be accepted, trying to be made righteous, trying to be blessed. You get so many people, you know, and, and it's catching on. People are catching it. You know, will come and say, well, you know, pray for me that God will bless me. I said, well, if you're born again, you're already blessed. Right. Ephesians 1, 3 says he blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you have every spiritual blessing. The thing is about their spiritual empowerments in your life to help you do better. Like I said, Jesus made unto you now wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, you're set apart, and redemption. So we, we pretty much have everything we need to succeed, as I said before. So the church is the called out one. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. So Jesus is talking about building his legislative government on earth. He said, my kingdom. My kingdom. So there's other kingdoms. Satan has a kingdom. And there's kingdoms of this world that, that we can talk about down the line. But Jesus said, I'm going to build my legislative government. And he says, nothing on this earth will be able to stop it. Hallelujah. And where is the kingdom? It's in every believer. But we haven't been informed about it. Now, here, here we see where Jesus um, says, let's go to the book of, um, we said that Jesus is head over the church. Colossians um, 1, 1.18, he says, I'm just going to go right there. We went, we went on, we was on that last week. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. And the word preeminence means first in rank or influence 
to be first to hold the first place. Jesus wants to be first in our lives. Amen. Amen. Now, it says in 1 uh, Timothy 6.15 that Jesus is king of kings. He, he's the potentate, high-ranking officer, royal minister of great authority who has supremacy. So he's saying he's, um, who is the blessed only uh, potentate, um, the king of kings and lord of lords. Now you may say, why are we going through these scriptures? Because see, all the authority that we have is delegated authority from Jesus. Jesus backs up our words. He backs up our authority. He's behind the authority. And when we understand that just being firstborn from the dead, this man, through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and sat down at the right hand of God. And the Bible says not only did he do that, um, but he made, he's, he's um, head over all principalities and powers. And then the scripture says, and you, point at somebody and say, you are complete in him. So that means you share everything he is. And, you know, and it's hard for people. You have to renew your mind to this because I know things attack us, things try. But you're talking about someone who whipped death in all three realms, physical death, spiritual death, and then eternal death. The Bible said he went to hell for three days and took the keys, according to Revelation 1.18, took the keys from Satan. <laughs> he said, I am who that was dead, and now I'm alive forevermore. So, and then the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. This is how I stay here all year long. This is how I stay here. If the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead has made alive this body, I mean, have quick raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he's also in me, Romans 8, 11, to quicken my mortal, make alive my mortal body, infusing it every day with the life of God. But, we, but when, you don't, when you don't think like that, as a man think it, heart, so is he. You don't think like that. Or you have divided thinking. But, but you have to take time and think because really we're going to see where your response is. Not only to pray, you're supposed to go out and change atmospheres. Not only are you going to pray. If you're in sports, you should be the best one with character and everything else to go with it. If you're in if academics, you say, I have the mind of Christ. You should be operating in a higher realm of wisdom, but we, but we keep thinking because we born again. We are thinking because we born again. I'm just natural. Well, you know, this is how what life is. No, that's their life. There's four, four words for life. There is, there is physical life. There is emotional life. The Bible says suke, that's soulless life. Bios, physical life anastrophe, behavior, and then there's the Zoe, the God kind of life. And that life is inside every believer. And, and here it is. The enemy don't want you to read the Bible. He don't want you to come to a place that's going to educate you with the word. He don't want you in a place that's going to say, listen, you're more than a conqueror. You're a top-notch, first-class, more than a match for. He don't want you to be around that. He wants you to be around, yeah, everybody going through something. He wants you to stay with excuses because excuses is nothing but nails that builds a house of failure. <laughs> you'll keep hammering that thing in until, and you'll keep failing. But I'm here to tell you, you are royalty. Yes. You have authority. And the enemy shakes in his boots when you get around people that know who they are. He shakes. Oh, oh, don't get around that brother there. He'll tell you who you are. He wants you to be around. I'm climbing up. <laughs> but I want you to get around somebody who say, Jesus say, speak to the mountain, don't climb it. Amen. Hello, we have some songs out there, you know, but Jesus said, if that mountain is in your way, speak to it. Yes, Mark eleven twenty three. See, that's authority. The church has authority. And your authority is not based on just where you where you are at. The Bible says you can send the word. I guess I done took off somewhere. 
<laughs> but these are things I think about all the time because it took me 30 some years to learn this. And I can't say, well, call my wife, or my, call my this, call my that. No one has the power to stop you but you. You can't make people your excuse. Amen. You have authority. The Spirit of God lives in you. You have the name of Jesus. You have the word of God on in hardcover. You have it inside your phone. You can get it. <laughs> Amen. So let's, 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 and then let's take the time and learn. Because the name of Jesus works. The word of God works. And God loves you whether you got born again or not because the Bible says God so what? Love the world. Love the world. He had, God love us no matter what. See, I wasn't taught like that. God loves me no matter what. Amen. And if I don't do right, he don't love me any less. Me living away from him doesn't change his attitude toward me, change my attitude toward him. That's why I'm moving away from him. <laughs> it doesn't change his attitude. He said, for I have loved thee with an everlasting love. See, everlasting means it outlasts all the crap and stuff people are doing, you doing, and don't do. He said, I'm still in love with you. For I'm still in love. No, just kidding. He said he's still in love. That's his song, though. He's still in love with us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> now, we also said, and I, I really want people to get this, because Jesus, is, come on, say Jesus is Lord. Jesus. Come on, say he's my Lord. He's my Lord. And the Father God, Father God. my Father, my Father. loves me. And I love him. And, I love and see, that's another thing, too, because his nature goes inside the believer. Once you receive him, the Bible says, we were by nature the children of disobedience. In uh, Ephesians 2.2, 2, we were by nature. So, you know, we teach, well, you still got that old nature, and that old man is still there. No, it's not. That old man is gone. And you got to learn how to face it. Because he's gone. No, he's gone. He's not there. The Bible says, any man being Christ, he's a what? Old things are what? All things are what? And all things are of who? Everything is of God. Where? In your spirit. In the spirit man. And this is why we need the word. Because this word is the only thing that can put us in touch with the real us. That's why Jesus said, the words I speak, they're spirit. They're life. And then the Bible said, the word is quick. It's a living thing. It's sharper than. 412, Hebrews, any two-edged sword to the piercing. See, young people want to learn how to do this. Am I talking right? People, I don't think our young people want to be like, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Just give me something to do. Tell me what I should be doing. That's, that's when they start getting experiences. Now, I'm not saying we don't correct, because love does. Love covers, and love also corrects. And corrects does it just simply means to mature, to develop you, so that you can discover God's purpose for your life. Amen. That's just simply what it is. But people want to know, how do we do this? How do we do this? You know, and, and this is how we do it. There's a song out there. I'm sorry. I don't know what he's, I, I'm not. <laughs> this is how we do it. Oh, Lord, where'd that come from? Look, so Jesus is not only the head of the body. The Bible says in, in, um, in Ephesians 1, I don't mean to go there. I'm not trying to be funny. I was trying to be serious today. I'm like, I'm serious. This is our young people. And parents, it's not too late to get influence over your children. Amen. Never give up. I say never give up. 
and never agree with the devil what he's, no matter what it looks like. Never agree with him. Says, oh, I'm going to say what you said to Jeremiah. You knew him before. And Jeremiah was about, what, 13 years old when God spoke to him? 14? He said, man, I called thee. <laughs> Every one of our youth is called. And the reason why you, I don't know why I'm born during this time, because you, the, you got the right makeup for this time. But I would say he chose you. I said he said he chose you in him before. Ephesians 1, 4, before you even got here. He knew this was the right time for you. And he made sure you're sitting someplace to hear how important you are to what God wants to do now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Ephesians 1, 18 says, I'm sorry, 1, says that God, that he's, Put all things under Jesus' feet. I'm just going right to the ones we pulled out. Under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. And the church is, 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 is comprised of every color. God is not in, into racism and prejudice and all these different schisms. Right, right. Bible says any man come. And then he says, bring the children to me. Because theirs is the kingdom of God. God wants you to know how to rule. God wants you to set the standards in this earth. Be the light. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, he says, and have put all things under the feet, gave him to be what? The head over all things to what? Well, that's why I'm very big on teaching people how to use the name of Jesus. In that name is where the glory of God is manifested. That's why he said you can lay hands on sick. If you really, and you know, you can get preached another Jesus. Well, Jesus was this. Jesus was that color. Man, forget about that. People always ask me, what color was the Bible? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. So I say, he was light. <laughs> <laughs> We're so caught up in that, you miss the purpose. The purpose is that he came to bring global restoration to the whole earth. To bring man, the highest species of God's creation, back into harmony with him. God wants you. Jesus told you the thief comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Talking about the devil. He said, but I am come. John 10.10, 10, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So we, he's head over all things to the church, and the church is his what? Body. The called out ones, the ecclesia, or ecclesia, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. All in all. Then he says he's called us out of what? Darkness into what? Marvelous light. Then one scripture says, in Colossians 1, 13, he have delivered us from the power of darkness. There is a power. I'm going to deal with this in this series. There is a power of darkness. There is. And it's, a, it's two kingdoms behind this one world. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, the Bible says. There's two kingdoms behind this world. And it's, this is the way it's been. Jesus talked about it in Luke 11. He talked about it in Matthew 12. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Satan has a kingdom. And then there's two families. We're going to deal with that down the line. I'm, I, I need to move on because I can stay in any one of these areas longer than I should. When I understood that, I started focusing on my family, focusing on my grandchildren, focusing and said, hey, man, there's two kingdoms in the world. There's two, fam two kingdoms behind this world, and there's two families. What family are we going to live in? The family of God or the family of darkness? So we have to make decisions. Now, he says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness have what? Translated, Translated us well into the kingdom of his dear son. So who's his dear son? And he has a what? Thank you. He has a what? 
kingdom which also has a church which is his body. I'm going to help you put it together. <laughs> he wants you to have control of your life. Amen. 1 Peter 2.9. This is where we st started. And this is gonna, where it's going to get real interesting. Real interesting. <laughs> but hey, God is good. I just want to say some things to go with it. First um, Peter 2 9 says, You are a chosen generation. Look at someone and say, You chosen. chosen. Not to fail. fail. You chosen to excel. Chosen to excel. You chose to do some things in this earth right now. Nobody never did before. Because he said, I'll do a work. Oh, uh, come on, somebody, that they ain't never seen before. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Neither have been imputed in the hearts of them, the things, them that love him, that the things that God has laid up for them. In other words, God's ready to do some things through this generation he never did before. He ready to do something through you that was never there before. You go on the job and say, I got the same kind of job you don't know. You have a different fingerprint, baby. That means when, you're, you're, when you touch something, it's not like the last person that touched it. It's, you, no fingerprints are alike. God wants to leave a mark through you. Whew. And people always say, how can I do that? You got to got to get your mind in agreement with the word. You can't be sitting on the well, you know, um, this may have, I got to do this to make that happen. No, Jesus has already done everything. All he, we need to do is operate our faith, the faith that he's given us. Start believing that. Start reaching for that. I got so many things I want to share down the line that's going to help all this to come together for you because I'm very methodical when it comes to steps. How do you how you move from here to there? Hmm? How do you move from here to there? And how do you keep increasing? Getting better. Then how do you influence everything around you for the good? How many want to be part of that? You already part of that, but we, we're gonna work it though. Look at somebody said, we're gonna work it? No. Listen, you are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, underline the word royal, a holy nation, underline the word nation, peculiar people that you should show forth. The word show is not the word S-H-O-W. That's showtime. <laughs> We're not talking about uh, what you call entertainment. This word show is taken from all the way back to Leviticus when God told him, said, we're going to use the shoe bread, S-H-E-W. That means to manifest his face, to manifest himself. See, one word show is just, oh, you know, we just, you know, we're watching the show, really good show. But show is when God manifests himself through you. How many like to see that? Amen. Every day. Every day. Everywhere you go. God's manifesting himself through the words he's giving you, through ideas, through wisdom. Whew. Supernatural. You can't do, it, do anything but just say, give God some glory. He manifested through me. Why? I let him yield it. I'm yielding, allowing him to think through my mind, allowing him. The Bible says we're instruments. Our, um, our uh, what's the word he used? Members. Let our members be instruments. 616 in Romans, you don't have to turn there, of righteousness. Because everything we do is supposed to affect. It's supposed to reveal him and affect things around us. So he says, you are a 
uh, priests and, and who are kings, spiritual nations, set apart for God's devoted ones. Well, I'm, I'm reading from another time, but let me finish reading that while I can get into this translation. It says, people that um, you are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him. Manifest forth. Say manifest forth. The praises of him who have called you what? So we can still we can still say you've been called out of the power of darkness translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Remember when Jesus walked the earth, he says, He said, I am the light of the world, and any man that follow me, he shall not walk in darkness. And then he turns around to his disciples a few a few days later and say, But you are the light for the world because long as he was here, he was the light, but he left the church here. We're the light now. 514, Matthew, we're the light now. And then here he says, he has called us out of darkness. So we're the light that's shining in darkness. Hallelujah. No matter what goes on, we can still shine. And don't have to worry about it. See, this kind of light, nobody can put shade on it but you. <laughs> Y'all know that. Don't, don't shade me, right? They can't shade. You shade you when you start saying the wrong things. You, the Bible says the, the word that comes out of our mouth should be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. You shade yourself when you're, you're talking from the natural. I can't. It's too rough. Yes, you have challenges, but I'm telling you, you have the greater one. Yes. Great is he what? Then who, he does what? 1 John 4.4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Man, getting the group, people to stay focused like that. And that's what the challenge is, right? Fighting that good fight of faith, right? That's what the challenge is because you're going to have to, you're going to have to be intentional. Yeah. Watch this. He says, in the Passion Translation, but you are God's, you are God's chosen generation, priests who are kings. Now I know when I say this and I read this to the ladies, they come up, well, we queens. Well, didn't you see the movie I Am King? <laughs> Viola, did she say she's a she well, she was a woman king? See, this language, because sometimes when you say well, we're sons of God. So what about daughters? Well, you're still a son because it, he's not dealing with gender. He's dealing with status. He's dealing with status in him now. Here's the other thing I love about it. Listen, us men, the Bible calls us the, the church, the bride of Christ. We got to be brides. Right, men? <laughs> That's the relationship. Like a bride, right? So, so he's not dealing with what we think he's dealing with. So he's saying that every believer is royalty. Every believer are king, is a king. And he says, the um, Passion Translation, he says, you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. Set apart as God devoted one. Now the word peculiar means one's own. One's own. Exclusively for him. You are one on no mean weird. The world uses are oh, you weird, that peculiar about that person. You know, no. This means treasured. It means exclusively for him. Look at Psalms 4.3. Psalms 4.3 says, God knows how to set apart the godly for himself. Look at somebody say, I've been set it apart for him. <laughs> I've been set apart for him. The Lord will hear when I call him. It, hallelujah. You are set apart for him. It's something, he said, you are exclusively mine. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And I want to show how treasured, how valuable you are to everything around you. On your job, in, in your neighborhood, where you shop at. I want to show the world how valuable you are. Hallelujah. Say, I'm valuable. Now, watch this. 
So the word royal here means kingly in nature. The word nation is ethnos, where we get culture from. And we're going to move down the line. With, if you don't see yourself as a kingdom culture, see, this is where the problem, the problem, the church don't see. We see ourselves, oh, well, we, we are a religious institution. We're the church. We're the spaceship to, to get us to heaven. Because we're getting out of here one day and going to that sweet by and by. No, man, it's, man we, we, we have to see ourselves as... <laughs> royalty kingdom we're a kingdom culture say so we're a kingdom culture no if I use this word this is see you gotta watch how people the enemy put these words in where, where he he gets the, he gets us to, we don't want to see ourselves as a nation and I'll tell you when you look at Psalms 33 y'all stay with me I'm getting I'm right in some little time where we can um, Psalms 33 12, it says, listen to what it says. This is how powerful we are. The scripture says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he have chosen for his own inheritance. Now, I can spend time on that just talk about you, me, you and I are his inheritance. His inheritance. Like Paul said, that what is his inheritance? Glory of the, rich of the glory, his inheritance in the saints. We're his inheritance. That's how valuable. Look at somebody said, that's how valuable you are. And see, when you think, well, why does this guy do it? Well, let me tell you, it's how you see yourself is how you're going to conduct yourself. It's how you see yourself is what, you, what you're going to let the enemy get away with. How you see yourself. Like when God had told them guys to go over in 13 chapter of Num and go spot the land and come back, and they came back and said, yes, yeah, everything you said it was flowing with milk and honey, but there's some big giants out there, and we were grasshoppers in our eyes, so are we in their sight. Notice this is how they saw themselves how people see you. This is how you see yourself. They saw themselves first as grasshoppers. God said, I don't want, I, you, you're not on Kung Fu show. That's how far. You're bigger than that. Look at somebody say, you're bigger than that. <laughs> they saw themselves. It's how you see, you go on your job, you see yourself, well, I'm just a janitor. No, you're a kingdom janitor. Yeah. They don't even use that word anymore. They got some fancy name for it. But see, when we get into, no matter where you at, you can make a difference. And God can still keep moving you up into where he wants you to be. Amen? Amen? So, it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Now, I know we usually do that to nations, especially America, but it's the church that's a nation, the holy nation. And the Bible doesn't just call us a holy nation, it calls us a spiritual nation. A spiritual nation. We are a nation in a nation. Look at 1 Peter 2 5. Let's go there real quick. Are y'all okay? <clears throat> because these things are just the things that, you know, that I believe that this, that um, enables, enables our faith. Disables our faith. Disables our faith. Because we don't see ourselves like the Bible says we are. He said you're a holy nation. Um, look at, um, what did we say, 1 Peter 2, 5. He says, there you go. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. A spiritual house, a holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. So what are these spiritual sacrifices? Praise, worship, prayer. See, we're the only one that can really do that. Now, people can pray, but the church, it's the church responsibility to pray. Like even 
in the covenant people of the, of the Old Testament, God had told them, say, if my people, are we his people? He told them then, said, look, there's some bad things that are going to happen, but if my people, he ain't talking about those people, my people, if they are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, where's that in Chronicles 16? Or is it not like 16, 29 something? Um, he said, called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I what? hear them, forgive them, and heal the land. Now, oh, in the new covenant, man, we're supposed to go out and, and heal the land. Yeah. We're supposed to speak blessings over the land. That's why a lot of stuff is falling apart in, people, in people's lives, relationships, because they, they curse it. See, the scripture says, in um, Proverbs, what, 11, 11? No, yes, yeah, I think it's 11, 11. Where he talks about the blessing, by the blessing of the upright, a whole city is exalted. Why don't you start blessing things? I, I call empowerment in this area. I, I, I decree that God's purpose is going to be done in this area. Give God and the angels something to work with. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, you can't keep repeating. I believe the, the things that are going bad because the church keep putting the negative. We, we're supposed to be releasing the blessing, but we're still releasing cursing. We're just repeating what they're saying. I'm not repeating what they're saying. I'm saying what God says it's supposed to look like. The Bible says we serve a God that called things that, as though they were. He tells Abraham, I have made thee the father. Abraham don't even have a son. Can't have one. But he's not telling Abraham, agreeing with his situation. He agreeing with what heaven had already said it's supposed to be. His will be done on as it. So but we're so quick to say what everybody else is saying. And we're going to get into the church, the boss. Every believer has a voice. I like this what Copeland said. It's the voice of victory. <laughs> well, that's the voice. It's the voice of faith. I don't just keep voicing. Once I talk about something, I'm not going to be voicing that all day. I know how to shut it down and keep it moving. Amen? Now, okay, here we are. So he says... Blessed is the nation whom God is the Lord and whom the people who have chosen for his inheritance. The word royal is kingly in nature. The word priestly is, is priesthood or fraternal priesthood in the Greek. Peculiar is one owns treasure exclusively for him. Now look at Revelation 1.5. It says that, Revelation 1.5, it says in 6, and this is important. I'm going to define the two. And then we're going to, but see, this goes right into prayer because once you understand what, if you're a king, kingly priest, kingly priesthood, then you will see there is a dual working. You have to be, understand, um, make the distinction um, between the king, kingship of your responsibility and the priesthood of your responsibility. But we don't teach this. See, we don't teach it, so everybody says, I'm praying, I'm praying. There's some things you need to pray for and there's some things you need to speak to. Amen. And some people say, well, I'm going to, but I'm praying. No, 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 you need to be speaking to the mountain, not going around talking about the mountain. That's what he says when Jesus said, if you shall, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. Mark 11, 23. We'll get into more of that in this series. But you got to know what to speak to. When, when sickness, a thing hit my body, ain't no time to pray. It's time to take my authority. When the devil start raging in the house, it ain't time to, Lord, Lord, like... <laughs> 
There ain't no time to be doing that. Come on, Lord, I'm going through, Lord. Lord, like, you better speak peace. You better speak the word. You better take authority. Amen. We don't do that. We want to pray about everything. Put it on God. God bind the devil up. He's in. I told you, whatever you bind up. Are y'all still here with me? And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Now, who kings he talking? What kings he talking about? Well, we can stay with me. Unto him that loved us, talking about him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, I can go right to Acts twenty and talk about how the church. The Bible says Jesus bought the church with his own blood. He paid for. It. He the Bible says he he bought established the church with his own blood. Now, what, what did it do for us? Look, look at the next verse. And have made us what? To, our, to God, our, his Father, and to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Go to 5.9 real quick. And then we're going to close it down and we're going to... Uh, but I want you to catch the distinction. Because I hear people all the time, they say, well, I'm praying about this. There's some things you pray about but then you, but you don't want to be just operating in your priesthood. You got to operate in your kingship. And I see that. I don't see that a lot with a lot of believers. And I've learned this. You got to op, You got to know when to operate in your kingship and operate in your priesthood. And this is so so important. When you learn how to combine the two, using them correctly according to the word, you're gonna see greater results you're going to see greater results. Amen. Watch this now. Watch this. They sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast was slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood of our, I'm, I'm sorry, by the, for, by, excuse me, God, by thy blood, out of every kindred, out of. See, we're a kingdom culture now. We're out of. We're not esteeming that anymore. We're esteeming the fact that we're a kingdom culture. Yes. I'm going to talk more on that next week. Kindred, tongue, people, and nation. And nation. Next verse. And have made us unto what? And Revelation said his father God. Now he's telling them our God. He made us kings of our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign when we get to heaven. Oh, there'll be no more crying, be no more dying. Oh, I've been sweeping through the city. Now, man, listen. God's program of reigning is right here on this earth. He wants you to reign here on this earth. Don't keep pushing it out. Where will I get to heaven? God say, and because when we find out in the end times, heaven coming down here when it's all over with. I'll deal with that another time. Now, let's deal with this. Let's refer back to Matthew 16, 19, 18. I've given you the keys of the kingdom, of the kingdom. Whatever you forbid on the earth, it's forbidden. Whatever you release on the earth is released. I'm going to be behind you. Heaven going to back you up. Jesus says, um, gates of hell will not prevail. So the kings do what? They decree. Go to Joel 22, 28. And what we do, I see people, and no offense to people, because I don't, I don't ever want to be offensive, but like I, I must Speak the truth in love. Amen. If you want to grow, I'm not going to sit and watch you going down the street 65 miles an hour and know there's a cliff talking about, yeah, you're doing good, buddy. Yeah, nice, nice. That car picking up, but I know what's going to happen. That's not love. Amen. 
That's not love. You have to tell people the truth. And I hear people say, well, I, I, I'm praying about this. I'm praying. I'm like, you, that's, not a, that's not a job for super prayer. That's a job for super king. <laughs> super priest, super king. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, a, that's not a job. Well, Lord, I wonder if you want me to have that job. Lord, I said, did not tell you to go over there. And you praying for me to, what? See, that's what, we, that's what we've gotten confused. We don't know what to pray for. See, you're a king and a priest. See, what a king does, he decrees some things. What a king does, he rebukes the devil. What a king for, he says, no, this chaos is not coming up in here. In the name of Jesus, I release the peace of God that passed. See, that's the king. Thou shalt decree also. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established. In other words, you are legislating from God by speaking his word over that situation. Bring, you can legislate righteousness in relationships, brothers, family. But see, we haven't been taught that. We've been taught, well, I'm just praying that God going to deal with your butt. God like, oh, don't get your butt out of my butt because my butt ain't over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't even over there in that. Y'all listen to me. Listen to me. We are to legislate. He says, once you decree things, this is what the word says, this is what I'm believing for. And, that, and he said, it shall be established unto thee. Remember, Psalm 119, 89, so forever, o Lord, is thy word settled in heaven. The word is settled in heaven, but you have to establish it here in your life, in the earth. See, you can't, that's why you can't be lazy about the word. Because you won't know what to say. You won't, you won't be able to have a distinction between what you should be operating off of. And I'm not trying to confuse you. Am I priesthood? Is this a job for the priesthood? Or this something I should be functioning in my kingship? Because you're a king also. Listen to what he says in Ecclesiastes 8.4. Ecclesiastes 8.4. He said, where the word of a... Come on, talk to me, y'all. Where the word of a what? King. There is what? Power. So your word shall have power to shift. And who may say unto you what you're doing? In other words, nobody should be questioning your authority. The enemy cannot question your authority. You've already established it. You say what your week going to look like, what your day going to look like. Yeah, but Pastor, when do I play? Okay, when do I play? <laughs> Kingly declarations. I'm still on king. Speaking the blessings over your city, over your household, over your marriage, over your children. That's what you're supposed to be doing. The Bible says the children are a blessing of the Lord. And one scripture says they are also our what? Assignment. You keep saying, it's so rough, it's so rough. I stopped letting people talk to me about my marriage. Well, you know, marriage could be hard. Don't, uh, don't bring that up in here. Uh-uh, the Bible said the way of a transgressor is hard. But those who operate from favor, those, those that are op under, have a good understanding, I understand there's some growth and all that, but I'm not going to let you bring your words up in my relationships. Yeah, it's rough, it's tough, but just speak for yourself. I'm not, I'm not saying we don't have to grow and there's no things you go through, challenges, but it's, you should be enjoying it because you're blessed. You have a goal. You have a goal. Hallelujah. Are y'all learning? Y'all look quiet now, but it's, I want to get to that prayer now, man. When do we pray? <laughs> We're going to pray. Let's hear it is. The blessings. The priesthood. This is the function of a priesthood. You are anointed. Say, I am anointed by God as a priest. 
Now, see, we think priest is just a position. It is. It's a kingdom position. Every believer is operating in king and priest. It's just you haven't learned how to operate in it. Here's the priesthood. It's, you say, I'm anointed of, anointed of God for men, for, men. for people, and things men. pertaining to God. Amen. What's pertaining? Otherwise, I can petition for them. I can supplicate for them. I can intercede for them. I can give God thanks. I can praise God. I can offer up spiritual sacrifices that we saw in my praise and worship. That's all priesthood stuff. That shifts atmospheres. That shifts atmosphere. And you have to keep doing it. I don't just pray for people one time or two times. People need prayer all the time because their will is involved. Their challenges are different. And, and we're going to talk about, I, I like to say four, but one that taught me is putting five there. But I did say five. One is, the premise is love. But, but the, the elements that, that, that causes prayer to work. See, and see, this is the time that the Bible says there will be a people, um, Daniel eleven thirty two that they're going to know their God and they're going to be strong now, and they're going to do mighty exploits because they're going to be operating off of knowledge. They're going to be operating off revelation knowledge of the word. They're not going to be operating off, but this is how I was brought up. This is why I always saw it like. Now, it's nothing wrong about how you see it. The Bible said if you want to operate in the highest level of authority, he said you're going to have to learn how to play by the rules that's laid down. You have to learn the system. And this is what I've been learning. This I'm still learning. I'm not saying I'm still learning it. But I'm telling you, it'll push you a lot further than you was not knowing this system. Well, you got to run around and try to figure out every little thing. Man, no, man. You had a mind of Christ. You got to step. And you can't let people tell you you can't hear God. Then you maybe you just need to get saved. Because Jesus said, my sheep, come on. Come on. You know, we'll, we'll give you points on how you can hear about his voice clear. I've learned those points, how he speaks us through conscience, through his word, through the spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's just certain things, see. Whew. Are we okay, y'all? So what is, I don't know why I keep seeing this scripture. Can you go to uh, Proverbs 29? What is 29? Something. Um, tw 29. Oh, I got it back here. And then we're going to get to praying. 29. Two. That's it. I've been seeing. See, when the righteous are in authority, then people rejoice. God said, you... When we that are the righteousness of God are operating in our authority, it takes the pressure off the people. See, when the wicked bear rule, people mourn. Because they don't care about anybody. All they care about money, 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 money. But I always say relationships has to be more important to you than things. Are you listening to me? Because we're here to carry out the will of God. So when the righteous are in authority, people rejoice, man. Because we bring justice and equity. And we're going to talk about all that during this month. But this is a great series. Are you getting anything out of it? Now, so Jesus says in Matthew, Mark 11, 14. Mark 11, 14. Jesus answered and said, oh, no, I, I did it again. It's Mark 11, 17. I'm talking about no man eat of this tree. Mm -hmm. How did that go? I don't know. If you find out, let me know. Um, he taught, saying unto them, it's not, because we think the church, we don't see the church as what Jesus sees the church as. This is the priesthood part of the church. But then we go out and we speak words over our city. We speak words over them that are in authority. In um, what's that? Timothy, Timothy two, one through five, 
1 through 5. Read that on your time. But he says he taught them saying, is, not my, is, is it not written my house? Now whose house he talking about? Church. He's talking about us now. We're the house, spiritual house. We're the house. Look at somebody say, you the house. <laughs> but I said, whose house are we? You know, in Hebrews 3. Listen, my house shall be called of all nations. The what? House of prayer. But you've made it what? Then a thief. Because when he went there, they weren't praying. They were in there selling hats and all kinds of stuff. Look, but the reality, <laughs> I don't have no problem with that. But <laughs> He said prayer should have been going on. The house shall be called the house of prayer. And it's amazing you can get people all, to do everything in the ministry with this, to get them to prayer, to get them to congregate and be the house of prayer. That's a very challenging thing. Very challenging. Because people don't see prayer, prayer that important. But prayer is what really can Prayer is terrain. It covers. When you're praying for your family and praying for you, the people, you are covering them with the will of God and then the angels are working to get it known to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's so many supernatural things. That be. And I tell people, you know, they say, well, how come, you know, you know, your marriage or this thing seems to, that, because I don't just pray for us, I pray for other marriages. I pray for other people's marriages. We spend time doing that. We're not trying to just say, I, I don't want I, you know, I, I like, I, I like the teaching. I like the, the hallelujah and the glory of God, the clappy feet and all that. I, this prayer stuff, ah, I'm going to ixnay on that. No, you, you, you don't realize there is harvests that are based on you praying. I'm going to talk about, in, well, let me just give you a scripture. Jesus said in Matthew 9.38, he says, pray ye therefore, pray ye therefore, that the Lord of harvest sends laborers into his harvest. He don't call it your harvest, my harvest. His harvest. So a lot of things maybe in our life is not working the way they could because we don't have prayer. We don't have time for personal prayer and corporate prayer. Jesus said, my house shall be called. In other words, I'm going to show you where the, the church is God's agency on earth. It's a living organism. It is for nations. It is the governing influence for nations. That's why Jesus said, go and preach the gospel to every creature and disciple nations. When your prayer clears out a lot of things, where God can start moving by the power of the Holy Spirit. His word is creating. And, he, and the Bible says, angels what? Hearken to the voice of his word. Like we're going to pray today. Just for, the, for those that are in, went, went on to school, college students has already started. And those are starting Tuesday. And, and we've given you prayers that you can pray. Put them on the refrigerator. You can pray them over yourself. Your, pa your parents can pray them over you. You can pray them, um, pray them over your children. Pray them over your children. Don't wait for school to put prayer back in there. I'm, I don't trust nobody's prayer more than I trust my own. That's one thing I learned. I, I mean, I ain't saying you can't pray, but I, uh, if you can, then we're agreeing with God. But I'm not going to put that responsibility on you. Amen. Amen. We're praying for people. And this is how we're praying over them. Glory to God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I'm, I'm stopped from here. I'm done. I'm done. I can't go any further. But prayer is so important. I tell people, you know, if you just commit, dude. Well, da, 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 twice a month, once a month, dude, get started. Because you're not going to get a full benefit doing, you can't get full benefit doing anything, not doing everything that's required. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> See, when God gets your time like that, heaven gets busy manifesting. Heaven gets real busy because you're releasing. His will can be 
done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not just praying for me, my wife, and us four and no more. You know, whatever. You know, I just got that off of somebody saying that. They family. You got to pray for the families in the earth. Bible say, in the all the what? Families of the earth shall be what? Families, man. Yeah, I pray for all the families. I pray for everybody I come in contact with. Everybody I engage with at some point. I'm praying the will of God. Just say, Lord, I want your will. You have a plan for them. And I might not be the one to get it to them, but I'm open. <laughs> I'm praying that you release angels, one plant, one water. God gives the increase. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand up. We're going to do two things. We're going to pray. Just real quickly over our youth. We could have prayed the um, any one of these. This is a prayer for your children, confession for your children, and prayer for raising children. Amen? You can add to it. I'm not going to pray these. I'm going to give them to you to pray, but I'm going to pray this. Can we get in agreement? Yes. See, the Bible said, first of all, prayer and supplication and intercession, giving of thanks is made for all men. And then he says, for those that are in authority. And I've learned when I'm praying for family, I pray for the parents, the guardians first. And then I let it trickle all the way down to the children. And I'm praying for the school system. I start with the board, the educational board, and all those that funds it and set policy. That's really what you want to do. And then I get to the superintendents, of those ranks that go all the way down to the classroom. Same thing when I'm praying, for, like I said, you, and I'm praying for children, I'm praying for the parents first. And then I'm praying for the children because they're going to affect the children. So I want God involved with the whole family. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand before you in agreement, say in Jesus' name, for our children. We pray your wisdom upon the school board. We pray that it will set policy and wisdom is going to come into that, those, those school board meetings. Well, you know, the uh, board of, what you call them? Board of Education, thank you. When they set policy, I decree the wisdom of God. I decree they will not try to change what you created from the very beginning. I decree they won't try to redesign anything. But Father, we invite you in to the Board of Education. We decree right now over the superintendents, Y'all can call some out. Superintendents, the principal, their staff, and what else? The what else? Counselors. Counselors, the assistant, principal, what else? The dean. Come on, y'all call them out. Social what? Social workers. Go ahead. Nurses. What else? Coaches. What else? Gym teachers. That's right. What else? Come on. Yeah, the school bus, all the way down there. The school bus, those that's driving the school bus. Father, we're decreeing. Huh? Cafeteria. They want, you got to give them good food. Cafeteria. Father, because you said you're as concerned about everything. You're so concerned about us that you count our hairs on our head every day. You're concerned about every minute thing concerning our children. And we also, for the daycare workers, yes. the children and their parents, after school programs, Father, we're praying your hand. We're releasing your kingdom. We're releasing your love and your care and your protection. And Father, we're releasing your will over every person we've called out every position even the person that does the lawn 
and all of that, the, the grass, the groundskeepers, the maintenance, all of these things are in play. We're decreeing protection. There won't be any disasters. There won't be any distractions. Glory to God. Our children, minds will open up and learn. And Father, you're going you're gonna to orchestrate whatever distractions. Angels, Jesus said that we are not to despise in Matthew 8, 10. You can put it on the board. We are not to despise these little ones. And that goes for the bigger ones too. That the angels of the children beholds the face of the Father. We decree angels protecting our children. I said we decree angels protecting. We decree 91 Psalms protecting. Angels are encamped around them, protecting them. There won't be any shoot, what is it, drive-by shootings. We bind it up now. We forbid it now. In Jesus' name. And we release the peace upon the minds of those that Satan would try to talk into doing that. We release the love of God. We release the goodness of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We release that over our children. Angels, our children will be taught of the Lord. They will be protected. They will be provided for. And they will reach their God potential. Huh? Their God potential. Their God potential. They are made in the image just like we are. They will be fruitful. So, Father, we pray that a over our youth, those in college, we decree the finances are there. Are there. Favor. Come on, favor. Those tuitions are expensive. But God, you're supplying all the need according to your riches and glory. Glory, we decree, we release favor from the north, protection, all of those things. Focus in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's release the blessing real quick. Say, well, I release the blessing of God upon all those I prayed about in agreement with each other in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah! 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 You may be seated. We're going to do one thing. We're going to take up our offerings right now, and then we're going to have communion. We're going to let communion be the last thing that we do because I want you to uh, be able to take communion and say, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement to be all God, that, to experience and be and share all that God has preordained and prearranged for my life. In Jesus' name. This is going to be a great year for the youth. A great year. A great year. That's right. That's right. A great year. I'm going to read a scripture. We'll just give from that scripture. In Psalms 1 15. Psalms 1 15.
Um, did I say 15? Yeah, 150. Here it is. <clears throat> 12th verse, it says, I'm going to go to the, no, we'll just do 13 verse. He will bless them that respect the Lord. He will bless them that fear the Lord. That's just us looking to him as our provider. Just making him the source of every resource. That's all. Listen to what he says. Both small and great, the Lord shall increase what? You, what? More and more. So the Lord has increase on his mind concerning. Say the Lord has increase on his mind concerning me. And not just me. He says, you and your what? Children. The Lord has increased on his mind concerning my household, concerning my family. So, Father, as we give, as we tithe, we offer and give, we honor you, Jesus, as the head over the church. We thank you for this great opportunity to sow and give into the kingdom of God for his purpose, for the kingdom purpose. We expect an increase. You've blessed us. You will cause the blessing that we have to manifest in our lives. I'm speaking favor. I'm speaking putting people in the right places, and I'm speaking that people's hearts will be receptive to allow you to lead and guide them. They won't move out of anxiety and worry. They'll move. They'll allow the peace of God lead, to lead them. Thank you. We acknowledge you, Jesus, in all our way, and you shall direct our path. We thank you. Come on, thank him for increase. We thank you for increase. I believe Lonnie was praying that this morning over everyone. Finding, allowing him to lead, trusting him. And Jesus... We bless this tithe and offering as Jesus blessed the little boy's lunch. And when he blessed it, the Bible said they all ate. They were satisfied. That which was not enough became more than enough, and they had leftovers. <laughs> so I'm decreeing more than enough in their lives and leftovers to meet every need with leftovers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, we're going to take our, our, our uh, communion and we're going to take it and we're just going to take it and I'm going to dismiss you. How about that? Now, people say, well, can I take communion? If you're born again, yes, you should take communion. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I've confessed his Lordship, believe in my heart, that God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I'm saved. Well, it doesn't matter what you're struggling with. We're taking this, just reminding ourselves that Jesus took every symptom, every flaw of character that we've had, anger and all those things that we seem to bring over when we were born again. But see, I've learned to get it at the root. Say, Jesus, you took depression. You took insecurities. You took every hurt, everything that caused it. Because you was wounded for our transgressions. You was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace you took the whipping for us. Every sickness that could come on this earth, you took it in your own body. 
On the tree we being dead to sin can now live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So whatever consequences we could have gotten or even if falling short, we keep looking to your death, your burial, your resurrection. Because that's where everything was paid for. My freedom as it sung today. That was God's echo into the air today. Freedom. And getting you to say, I'm free. Who the Son has made free is free indeed. So, Jesus' body that was broken for us has provided health, strength, Every blood cell, every organ, every tissue, joint, marrow, bones, every organ, every orifice of your being, I decree will be affected by you just looking at what this communion really stands for to remind us, put as often as you do this, Jesus said, you do it in the remembrance of him. But you're free. Sound free? free. Let's eat. Jesus, this is your blood that represents the new covenant. According to Hebrews 13, 20, the Bible says we've been justified, declared righteous by his blood. One scripture says through his blood. Let me tell you something. God is not holding anything against you. I'm going to say that again. God, the Father, is not holding anything against you. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I look how deep, how dark, how long it has been going on, where your struggles are. He, the blood, is saying you are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness. Accept it. Because once you understand he's not holding anything against you, then you'll see he's not withholding healing, health, and your needs. He's not withholding that from you. Amen. See, when he forgives, he releases. Even his mercy is about forgiveness. The Lord is good in his mercy. I will be merciful to your unrighteousness. A lot of people struggling with healing. Because they haven't, they keep looking at the thing. The Bible says, <laughs> through, his, through his blood, we have, redemp we have redemption through his blood. Ephesians 1, 7, you don't have to put it up there. Even the forgiveness of sins. I don't know how many times you struggle with it. I've had things I struggled with for quite some time. But I wore it down. I'm forgiven. The Bible said the blood speaketh better things than that of Abel. Abel blood cried revenge. Revenge. Vengeance. Jesus' blood cries forgiveness. And it's something you have to receive. Nobody can receive that for you. He's not withholding anything from you because he's not holding anything against you. Amen. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Can we walk away with a sense of free, a strong sense of freedom today? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hebrews 13, 20. I just want to read this. It's one of the most, this capsulizes this whole thing we're doing right now. Now I'm the God of peace that brought again from the dead. 
our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. <coughs> Next verse. Make you perfect in every good work. Make you complete, mature in every good work to do his will. Working in you. This is it's working in you tonight, today. It's going to begin to work in you. Watch this. That which is well-pleasing <laughs> in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be manifested, that's that word doxa, forever and ever. Amen. Let's drink. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. God, your heavenly Father, has given you angels in charge over you to keep you, guard you, guide you, protect you in all your ways. Live a life of joy. Be led forth with peace. Because you and I are empowered to impact the whole world with the gospel of the kingdom in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Now listen, make sure you greet some people before you take off. Just greet some people. Say, God bless you. I believe your mother is here. Yes, how you doing? That's your mother, right? Blessing. Come on, y'all wave at her. She got a nice smile, too. <laughs> Blessings. Thanks for coming and being part of us. Listen, next week we'll be back here Wednesday. Um, until then, you and I are called to do what? Rain in life.